All right. Hello, it is Lisa and Lauren from Artist Moving. We are here today with two of our awesome Art Break Day hosts, and they've been with us for some time. Number one, we thank you for your volunteering for this movement, which is really core. It is movement. So I'd love for Amy for you to introduce yourself and like, how long have you been doing this? Oh my gosh. Hello, I'm Amy Bauer. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this forever. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think at least since 2013, right? Yeah, forever. Pretty steady. Um, and I move it around every year. I'm currently in Long Beach, California. So that's where I've been doing the last several. And it's awesome. I'm an artist by profession. So this just fits in exactly with what I do. Fantastic. All right, Joy. So I'm I'm Joy Nice. Um, this is, was my twelfth uh, year of uh, doing art break day. So. Wow. Great. And you've been in Stockton, California, for those twelve years, correct? Yeah. So e awesome. each year it's uh, in a different location in Stockton. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Okay. So um, I would love to know how was 2024 Art Break Day for you each, and maybe we'll just go around the round table. So Lauren, you first. <laughs> sure, yeah. So uh, I hosted my Art Break Day in Corvallis. That's where I live. It's my town. Uh, I had a, probably a, around between 60 and 70 participants. Um, and I had, a, I had a fabulous time. A lot of it was people who just randomly discovered the site as they were taking their walk around for lunch break, which is my favorite. That's one of my favorite participants is a participant that doesn't know it's going to happen. And then all of a sudden they're there for two hours and they tell me that they forgot how fun it was to just sit down and make some art and scribble for a while. Uh, so I had a lot of those kind of participants I always love someone uh, this year said, I feel like a kid again. Uh, and that seems art making seems to bring that quote out of participants quite a bit. Uh, we had clay this year, uh, air dry clay, which was very popular. Uh, I think that it's a seems to be approachable for kids to just dive in and create whatever they want. Uh, I watched a lot of kids combine a lot of medium, you, you know, with clay, with they made clay and then they painted it and just saw what happened when it dried. It was really fun just seeing everyone hop from table to table and come up with ideas together and share that. So yeah, it was just, uh, it's a really... I feel really honored that I get to offer that to my community on an annual basis. Of course, everyone always asks when I'm going to be there next and I have to politely tell them that it's an annual event uh, and uh, explain to them uh, that it's global and that there's a lot of people doing it simultaneously, which always gets people very excited uh, and that um, I'll see them next year. So yeah, it was good. Awesome. And Joy, you want to go next? Maybe Frozen? Amy, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this year, um, it was 108 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, wow. So a couple days before, I always do a lot of marketing for the event. So a couple days before I put, we have air conditioning in the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> good so idea a few people did show up just for the ac um yeah. but it was great we had um enough ac that in a packed room it didn't feel hot or anything and people were just coming and going and as um in my own personal art and all this stuff i do i always recycle everything so i had a bunch of cardboard boxes and stuff and i had some paint and markers and kind of let people do what they wanted and it was a lot of fun. There was even one point, um, it was a good mix of adults and children of all different ages. Um, but one child saw the box and said, oh, I know what I'm going to do. And then the next thing I know, she was wearing it. It was oh. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I have a bunch of photos on my blog because it was so fun. But I was so involved that one of my friends who showed up was like, you need photos. And I'm like, oh, yes, I do. Please do that. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. It's hard when you're in the middle of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You always know you're having a good time when you forget to take photographs, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Enjoy. Are you unfrozen or let's see? Hello. I think she's froze, right? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it. Why don't you go, Lisa? Okay. So mine was uh actually epic. I I got support from the city of Santa Monica. I was in Virginia Park and I over these I met you, Amy, in Venice when I was on Venice Beach. It was totally yeah. different vibe. I've been wanting to get support from Santa Monica, the city, and um, Virginia Park, like, jumped in. So they advertised it a lot. They gave me three canopies. Beautiful setup. Yes, it was 108 degrees. It was a heat wave. But somehow, under the canopies, there was um, air. You know what I mean? It wasn't as hot as it, it was. Um, in the morning, um, they offered the city of Santa Monica, the library to do um, a little reading for kids, for toddlers. So they had a storytelling and then they went on and then they did chalk on the ground, which is really cool. So that was the first influx. influx. And then I had like four volunteers, no, maybe six volunteers. So I had a lot of volunteers, which is fantastic. And then the adults started coming in. And it was those random adults that were like, what's going on here? And then once you say, this is a worldwide event, they sit down and they never leave. <laughs> I had this one woman who just, just randomly, you know, was there and basically was there for four hours. It's amazing. Wow. And then in the afternoon, I had an influx of after school kids. So that, <laughs> you know, it got crazy. There was tons of kids just creating. It was really fun. Um and then we had a poetry reading, which was cool. I think people really loved that idea of poetry. And then um, I did collage. I did my normal stuff, like paint and drawing. <clears throat> oh, yes. Also, we did, um, we collaborated with the 6,000 Circle Project, which is on our, mm -hmm. one of our podcasts. And it's all about honoring the feminine. So I had circles as the, you know, as the, the construct that people create on. And really jumping off, you know, what is, the feminine to you. So that was exciting. Um, yeah, it was an amazing event. I, I, I had an epic time and was really happy. It kind of felt like the first year we did it in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It was just felt really like, wow, you know, people were lots. I, I think I had over 300 people. It was amazing. But the after I was completely exhausted. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, the whole thing yeah. is, I thought about it. The whole thing is, it's, we are offering space, right? A safe space for people to create and, you know, an acceptance and permission for creating and just to hold that space takes a lot of energy. We don't know it, you know what I mean? But I, I kind of yeah. analyze it and it's like, because afterwards you're like, wow, what happened there? You know, and I guess let's see, one of the most meaningful moments, like a, I think was just like one woman who didn't know that what it was, she sat down with her iPods on and basically did a mandala like really intricate for like four hours <laughs> and was so happy after she got up i took a photo of her and she just was beaming so that was cool very cool yeah i i want to hit on what you said about the sort of the energy it takes to do something like that this um you know lisa and i are so grateful to our volunteer hosts and any volunteers that come in help with sites because we know the energy it takes to make something like that happen uh because we've done it before uh and it it is it's something it's kind of like you because you have to be on because you're you're there and you're you know you're doing the background stuff of checking on supplies and and keeping the paint going and the water going and the cleaning the collage table and putting out more clay uh, but you're also it, the energy it takes to um, sometimes recruit people to sit at a table mm -hmm. because they, they always feel like there are, are ulterior motives. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, sometimes people aren't very trusting of something that you tell them is free. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, that's one aspect of our break day that I, I really enjoy is offering something for free to a community because so many things I mean, there aren't very many things that are free that don't come with some sort of catch. I mean, I guess the catch is that you feel better when you're done, oh, wow. uh, <laughs> basically what we're doing, uh, because it really does. It, it, it shakes people up a little bit. They get a little uncomfortable 
with the notion of it. And then they, and the people who choose to, to sort of trust me and trust the group and sit down, uh, are, you know, they get to experience what it means to trust a community and do something with that community. Uh, and, and I, you, you know, everyone always leaves, uh, happier. I did have one, one uh, participant who, uh, who was very apprehensive about sitting down and especially the blank piece of paper and the blank piece of paper was very intimidating. And I said what I t- tell a lot of people, which is it's, oh, it's about the, the process. It's not about the product. And <laughs> his reply is, but what's the process? And that was so interesting to me because I, I just take for granted that it's, that I'm so used to it. Right. And here was someone who was trying really hard, but didn't know what that, what, what process even met meant. And so I, I said, you, you can literally just like start scribbling on a piece of paper. You could crumple the paper. You could, um, you know, do a dance over there or whatever. So he, he did it. He dove in and filled a whole piece of paper with a landscape. And then I asked him, I, you know, and I said, how do you, how do you feel now? Cause he told me during the process, I haven't done this since elementary school. And he looked like he was probably in college mm-hmm. or graduating. And I said, how do you feel now? And he said, conflicted. Um, Cause he, he didn't really, he really wanted his art to look like it looked in his mind. Yeah. And so I got to reiterate the, it's a, not about the product. It's about the process. Like, how do you feel about, how do you feel now? You know? And <laughs> so it's really interesting. I always enjoy getting other people's perspectives. I learn a lot about, because of course, Lisa and I, our main goal and Amy, I'm sure yours is too, is just to get everyone to kind of take a break and, uh, you know, and just whatever that break looks like. That's the important part of it. And there are benefits to making art your break, but we just want you to take a break and uh, breathe for a minute, Uh, you know, and it's interesting how different people approach it differently. I I always learn a lot every art break day. Yeah, I think I mostly um, utilize the children, especially when they come in with their parents and I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm here, here's something for you to work on too. And I was like, and even, you know, if they're stuck, I'm like, just let the child be your director. Oh, you what to draw and what to put there. And they always do it. <laughs> it's so fun. And then they That's get awesome. all into it and they've made their own piece of art too. Yeah. Yeah. Joy, can you hear us? Technical issues. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I think no, that's the beauty of our break day because it's really non technical, right? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it could be, but it's not. Um, what for me, an observation that I had was um, I love kids and I love how they create, and it's like, you know, they don't have any, right? They should be the director of the adult. It's kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do, right? But, um, the feedback that I got is when the adults were created, they had more connection and more conversation. And I had one participant who was an adult. She's like, I really liked when just adults were there because when the kids came in, it was just like, wow, you know what I mean? So, but she appreciated it, but she liked the deep conversations that were happening when just people, you know, adults sit together. But then of course you got to vibe off the kids because, you know, they, they know how to do it, you know, with no event. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had a five-year-old who was the only child for a while. Mm-hmm. She did not have a problem telling us all what she wanted to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun because I also, um, I brought a sewing machine mm-hmm. and we had all sorts of stuff. We had um, pieces of triangle fabric that was supposed to be banners. And I, I said to her, oh, let's make this into a purse. So I did the whole thing, but her father kept saying, look, watch, you know, so I was showing her as I was going, I was like, how to, you know, turn this piece upside down, pick the ones you wanted. And we did it. And then she left with a little bag that was perfect for her. That's that. awesome. 
Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love, um, uh, one of the reasons I love having multiple sites is that, you know, you, you get so many different ideas from all the different hosts and what they've done. Um, because one year, Amy, I know that you did just a collaborative painting where everyone added to a canvas and that's such a great idea, uh, and, and approachable, you know, for, anyone that may not have a lot of space or a lot of supplies. Um, and then I love your introduction of reusing material and just, you know, cause that is the essence of creativity, you know, what can this become? So that's, mm -hmm. that's so great. Yeah. Do we have, uh, uh, Joy, do we have you? Are you on audio? No. I still can't hear Joy. No. We can't hear you, bummer. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if I can attest to Joy, um, we've seen pictures years, uh, years along the way, and um, there's always bright smiles on their faces. And I know that um, there have been events across Stockton, and everyone that participates, I'm sure, um, benefits from um, those art breaks. So we sure do appreciate it. Yeah, and I love what Joy is that she really involves the city, I believe, mostly. It's like the city is a really good collaborator, which is fantastic. So um, I just think for me, Art Break Day is like a joy fest it, for kids, for adults, for the hosts. And then so I'd like to put it out there. You know, we have a lot of questions come throughout the year. Like people want to do Art Break Day, but there's some sense of um, that it has to be massive. You know, that it has to be epic, that it has to be, you know, <laughs> like a, you know, a Burning Man festival or something. So what I love <laughs> about the conversation about small sites, you know, medium sites, big sites, like how do, how do, you know, what would you tell that person who wants to do our break day site? And, you know, uh, any site, it doesn't matter, even if it's just like at a, one picnic table outside at a park. And the best thing I like to do is try to get my friends involved and get more people. So currently I partnership with a little theater and they bring in, they send out their newsletter and invite people. And so we get a bigger crowd. Um, but I think that's the key is inviting your friends and telling everyone, even if you don't tell them to the last minute, because technically they could come in for 10 minutes and, you know, and then leave. And I always make sure that all my advertising and even verbally or in print, it says, you know, you can drop in, you don't have to be there exactly at the start time, you know, and you don't have mm -hmm. to stay. And you can come a half hour before we close the door, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that's a good tip. I love. I like the reminding people, participants, that it can be drop in and that it can be something that you do for 10 minutes because that really will make a difference. That 10 minutes will make a difference in your day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, late because then they can help me clean up. Yeah, <laughs> the cleanup is always is always tough after it's, I'm always glad I always get really energized, though, by my art break day event. So I can usually push through the cleanup, you know, and then I'm the next morning, though, I'm I'm pretty much, you know, I'm I'm so tired. Yeah, but it's worth it. It's worth it every year. Totally. I like the idea of drop in like for participants and even for your friends, just drop in to say hi. Just make a mark, you know, create together, um, you know, just connect with people. And that's beautiful. Joy, yeah, I would, yeah. No. yeah, I would just say that um, for anyone who's thinking about hosting an art break uh, day would be also that, um, yeah, that it's sort of, you can start small and you can, you can even stay small if you want to. Um, and an art break day can really be anything you want it to be. I mean, that's the beauty of art. That's the beauty of art break day. And it's the beauty of doing something yourself uh, is that you can make it what you want to make it. And so, um, you know, I, I really do think you can change the world one art break at a time. So even if only one person, um, if it's just you, you know, just if that's how you start as a participant, then that that's adding something positive to the world. So yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it could 
one person, it could be 300 people or a thousand people like our, our site in Florida, Floriopolis. I mean, they have like 50 sites on their one, you know, <laughs> in their one thing. That's fantastic. Um, so I would say just do it. And I think the power is that we're all creating together at one time, you know, our break day is like, and I think that's the, 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 the gift. It's like, you can be creating with somebody in India and, you know, when people, you know, kind of think about that, that's really cool. And it's just the act of creating. Mm-hmm. And when you, obviously when you create, then you feel better and the world feels better. <laughs> and, you know, and I think also, as we all know, everybody talks about it right now, everybody's so divisive, you know, there's all these people in different camps. And it's like, when you sit down at an art break table with strangers or with friends, it's like that all, it dissolves. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's a really cool, safe, accepting space just for your own creative expression. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Joy, are you there? Can we hear Joy yet? No. No. <laughs> we um I'll just say thank you again to you two uh for uh not only hosting Art Break Day for years, forever, right, Amy? Forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also for taking some time out of your day to day to talk to us um about your experience um and uh, give some tips for anyone who might be thinking about doing it themselves. Um, and, then, and we look, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, Joy, you would love to hear, hear your voice, but that's not <laughs> happening. But we would love if you would write us something that we can, you know, put on the below on this podcast so people can tap into what you've offered in Stockton over these forever years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much. And we look forward to next year. 2025. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>